properties are created. Um, there's kind of an order of we'll, we'll, First, there is a way of getting from the perimeter to the heart. And then there's a way of making sure that everyone can, can get to each other. So it's not that everyone then has a path to each other's house. It's more like an interior ring that they can just come out and go on to get where they need to go. Otherwise, you take up your whole landscape with paths. So let's make pathways to the center oops, of the block. Just step forward. And let's just get ourselves from our gateways to the center. So Mark, if the, if the corner intersections are nodes, would you want um, pathways going toward the center, or would you want that a little bit more private? Um, would, you, would you want the center of the block more private? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, so obviously we're doing this, it's very diagrammatic and it's very quick, but there are these important issues of scale. The intersection is obviously something that all the blocks share, or that people from outside the neighborhood can come into, and that's like a great public space. This one is at a different scale, where it's like, yeah, the whole neighborhood is a village, and the intersection is their village heart, but they're a village too. They're a smaller village with a different scale, and so these gateways are a little more important to them. They need people to recognize that you're coming into a new scale, and there might be clues at those gateways um, that the access is more like limited or occasional, something like that. So you obviously, you'd want to think about how you develop your, your edges. If you're wanting to be totally permeable, that's one thing. If you're wanting to have more privacy, that's another thing. I mean, everybody wants to have friends over, but they don't, they don't necessarily want people coming in all the time. Sometimes we'll hear people walking through at night and they're like, here's the chicken. And we don't know who they are. It's kind of enchanting. Okay, so now let's just make sure this will only take a few little pathways, but just make sure that everyone can get to each other's house, that there's that interior ring. In case you don't see it, let's make sure that that's easy enough. Now, for those of you who have taken a permaculture course before and you've heard the, the term mycel myceliating, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's taking this concept of a mycelial mat that lives under the forest floor. Basically, a mycelial mat is, um, it, it, that is the mushroom culture. The mushrooms you see on the surface are the fruit, but the living intelligence system of the mycelium is actually um, kind of, it's a, life, it's a life form that's intelligent. And it is, is actually monitoring all of the plants and trees in the forest and at the nodes, just exactly like these intersections. The nodes um, where the pathways of the mycelium intersect are where information is exchanged. Nutrients can be flowing through and then suddenly they're being redirected over to a tree that needs them most. So nutrients, minerals, water um, are basically moved through a mycelial system. So what you're seeing here is very much like myceliating. And what is so exciting about that is that when you look at an ancient village that you love to go visit, and then you look at a mycelial system, and then you think about what you know of ecological design principles, it can just shock. You need to be wearing a diaper, frankly, because it's like, oh my god, we belong here. We thrive when we act like nature. So let's myceliate the rest. You need pathways to your friend's house. You got to get across the street. Now, so women in Seattle got this going by making little stamps of like dinosaur footprints out of sponges mm -hmm. and little squirrels and you know like a badger or something. And then they literally went out and they stamped pathways between the, the houses of children who played with each other. And those need to be just random. So mm -hmm. just go ahead and show um, some pathways going from the block outward to connect with the people. Um, beyond. Like through the street? Yeah, it's right across the street. Some people will have to tear up the street for sure. Others will have to stamp animal footprints. Some will leave bread and crumbs and cookies. Aww. However you get it done. So <laughs> this is going to live there. Oh my gosh, my mother. Skip across the street.
across the street or like do some weird stuff as opposed to I want to know why people no, haven't created drop. zip lines in cases zip like that. If your friend is across the street <laughs> and you don't have a zip line, what are you doing? <laughs> How about a bridge? <laughs> and, and truly, truly, Jerry just said, what about a bridge? <laughs> the only reason that there aren't zip lines and bridges here is because insurance companies tell us it's too risky. We must do these things. Okay, so what you're seeing here, this is, this is almost a complete placemaking framework that you can install in a weekend. You could create pathways, you could, you know, basically modify a hedge. Mulch companies are so happy to bring you mulch and just dump it at your house for free. We already know this. So the creation of the center, the creation of the gates, and the creation of the pathways could all be done in a weekend together. I, I mean, I think that the landscape of our isolation is absolutely a house of cards. It's so vulnerable, and our creativity is far more powerful. But even still, like, how are we going to become a, a, a zero carbon or low carbon community? Well, okay, so Betty is a nurse, and uh, Leslie is uh, an ecological designer. Jana is an emergency preparedness specialist. Um, Steve is a farmer. Jan is a journalist. Like everyone here has all these talents, but they, we all go again. We all go elsewhere. So, part of part of placemaking is like vital nodes of activity where people are sharing their skills and stories. So let's just pass this pile of things that children have created. The the challenge for the kids was take take two of these um, each. The challenge for the kids was. If our society is going to be a better place with people working together and sharing right where they live, what would they need? What would they need to, to have here in order to really be resilient? So everyone, take two. Well, what? Hold on. Wait. wait. <laughs> we're, we're going to call these out. Just two. Oh. Is he, I took three. Yeah, yeah, okay. Just take two. One, three. Okay. One. Okay, so um, did did Riddy talk about relative location? Okay, well, part of part of um, part of using this idea of zones uh, is to locate things in relation to each other, so that the things that you need to be closest are close, and the things that need to be farthest away are farthest. I'm sorry, could you say that again? Um, relative location. Things need to be located in relation to each other in a way that makes sense. So if your wind is coming at you this way, you're not going to tend to locate your compost pile right in that vector, for instance. If you have some people you don't like, you might put it in their vector. No, only if you want to fight. But So relative location. The thing is, each one of us does this every day. And we might think this is something to be learned. But watch how easy this is. So let's just start with you. Um, why don't you call out what you have and simply locate where it needs to go, according to just your spontaneous sense. OK, I like this because it doesn't have a structure. It says play space. Um, play space? Play space. Like I have one that says jungle gym, and that's a structure. So I'm going to go play space. And that, to me, says something like, I don't know, I see like a family here, maybe. So just like up near the house under a tree. Near one of the like that intersection of paths kind of tells me here's the heart. Kids are over here. People yeah, meeting in the center. So he's automatically practicing relative location. We all do it all the time. It's the way we lay out our, our bedrooms and kitchens. Next. <laughs> okay, uh, I can barely read it, so I'm making it up. Uh, shaman shamanic journalism. Shamanic journey. Journey. Uh, like. Thing or something. All right, shamaning space. space. Shaman space. space. Holy space. Looks like shamarmic John Ray hoax. <laughs> okay. Keep moving though. We got to do this right. more quickly. So anywhere, I think that is an important thing to be near the center. The center. Okay. Uh, healing space. Bench is going on the street. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and lay that down if you want. Oh yeah. Wood shop. It's kind of a, seems like maybe a big thing to put anywhere, so I really don't 
You could repurpose, <coughs> repurpose a, gar a garage if you want to. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Garage has been garage. repurposed. What? You just blew my mind. You opened all the houses to option. <laughs> yeah. Wait, isn't that your house? Go ahead. It, <laughs> it is, but that's okay. This is just... Okay, before we go farther, notice how everything connotates something. Like a bench out here means that we're activating public space and we're making our edge more inviting to others. Um, the shamanic journey here <laughs> means that it's going to tend to define the character that we share in the center. So all of these have different um, implications. Play space, that'll tend to mean that this whole pocket here is more conducive for children. Next. You got a hot tub. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Anywhere. And then an uh, altar, which I was thinking maybe oh, would go in <laughs> towards the heart. Okay, now, now we have a sacred center of the village. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got yoga space, which I think would be done, I don't know, somewhere in the center, and then death and birth transition place, which, oh wherever Betty's house was, the nurse, maybe, right there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming you want maybe your tools near the wood shop, or maybe one of those gardens. And then the uh, farmer's market, if you're growing some food over here, I'm assuming somewhere closer, but kind of still in the center, okay. so you could have food. Some shamanic farmer action. I got three for some reason. I got a sacred place here. And apiary, which I found out was a beehive. So I'm going to place that near the trees. And let's put a taco stand next to the bench. Now we're talking. I have a meditation place to sit, and I'll put this under the big tree because I always like meditating under big trees. A uh, kitchen, probably somewhere over in the heart area, outdoor kitchen, and then greenhouse. I was trying to figure where to put this one. Sun. South. Yeah. That Where's house that was all lit up. This one? Mm. True, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hmm. Want to go? Okay. Oh, flower garden. Mm -hmm. Near the beans? Oh, yeah. Nice. Yes, where, where is it? Okay. okay, all along the frontier in a long line. <laughs> and then uh, office, anybody have any ideas for that? I was thinking maybe upstairs somewhere? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Probably want that accessible from the outside when people come to like, interact. I guess, and like organize and plan. I got cold storage. I was thinking on the north side, somewhere shady, right? Beautiful. And then the stage. Oh, I was thinking the stage, like over here by the bench and the taco mm -hmm. stand. <laughs> and the farmer's market over here by the... Garden. The garden. <laughs> um, so, got a tree house in this beautiful <laughs> tree <time>. here. <laughs> kind of doubles as like a cafe. And have like a pulley system going here so that people that maybe aren't nimble enough to get up to the tree house will still be able to like order stuff and bring it down, and you can pick a book from the book library that's underneath the tree and bring it up there. Nice. That's sweet. Okay, um, I got village fountain. In its center. And bike coat fountain. Bike coat? Bike coat. Bike coat. Coop. 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 Is that what it is? I don't know. Like a bike coop. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. It doesn't need to be sent to. It's this area. It's those area. Okay. I have a community meeting house. I was thinking this house is kind of close to the center. Repurpose, Repurpose yeah, that. All right, we'll put that there. I have another hot tub. So wow. where's the first hot tub? Where's, oh, mm -hmm. first one's there. So we'll put one over here by the community house. <laughs> so I have a bike storing corral. So there's a co-op over here. I'm assuming that it would have a corral too. So people over here are probably needing... Maybe the there's a gateway, yeah. Yeah, to their bikes. Yeah. And there, this is a hot tub happy 
face. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, oh back here in this little <laughs> side <laughs> spot, yeah. back by the treehouse where the cafe's at, they might want to be doing some soaking. Yeah, it's more of a private version. Yeah. Nice. yeah. And then uh, another multi-use meeting house. And I'm thinking that this place has a lot of space that could be used. Okay, I have another two library, so maybe we could put one on the corner for some neighbors to use. And then an art studio. This can go right over here next to the hot tub in case you want to paint nudes. <laughs> okay, I got a bike repair shop and a tool library, and I would like to put the the bike shop so that we communicate with not with the outside, not with our own thing. Okay, people coming by, bringing their stuff, and we can work there and and repair. Maybe we build a small one. Uh, either we reprocess this little area here, where just would they, we have to talk to the people, or we build an extension maybe to this house on the uh, in the meeting. And the tool library I could either put in the middle because everybody needs tools, bring them, bring them back. But we could also combine it with the bike stop because these people take care of the tools and they need tools. What did that say? Jungle gym. Tools. Yeah, because they bring their kids and their yeah. thing behind them. They're like, I gotta fix my bike, go play on the yeah. Perfect. Okay, more? Inspired by Lithia Park in Ashland. We we'll have a theater next to the stage over here. Nice. Um, hopefully, there's a, a dress up area in there that the community can just go and not have to have official shows happening at the theater, but it's just a way of, of life and play. Um, and a grotto. Oh my god, pop-up improv? Like... <laughs> am I going out of bounds to put the grotto sure. over here? Yeah. So a grotto is more of a sacred space, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So having it, having it outside, because we already have such a consolidated strong core of sacred space within. Um, maybe it's it's a grotto that's like a moat energetically that surrounds the whole village. Definitely, you know, again, each one of these connotates something. And to locate that in public space means something for our larger culture mm -hmm. to be able to have such a feature out there. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful mm -hmm. idea. It's almost mm -hmm. like they can duck in court. without actually committing to coming into the center. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have, uh, I've been just been told that we have 10 minutes. Put the tool shed right so there. there's a ton more to do. So each person just come forward and, and call it out as you do it. Okay, it's a pond. Looks like we already have a hot tub, so maybe we'll put it in a little corner in here. And then amphitheater. It's hard to read what all these things are, but um, let's put it um, over in this this intersection right there. Mm -hmm. Now, how about the the welcome information board here by the farmers market? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of possibilities, but and the kindergarten school next to the garden. And the cannery. Why not? <laughs> and a running trail. <laughs> oh, I have a book library too. by the Damn. school. Nice. And compost by the cafe. It we'll catch like it. A running running trail. I don't know how far you're going to run. But. I'm from the gazebo learning center by the kids' area. And mom and dad tea lounge. <laughs> hang out without the kids. <laughs> I have over me and bench. Mm, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe mom and dad want to sit in the sauna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> any, any others? No, I guess that would be okay. added to the running trail. And I know there's a beehive. Jared, did you put a beehive over, in here somewhere? Yeah, yeah, so let's build up the beehive area. Nice. Mm -hmm. What's, what is it? Beehive. Oh, another beehive. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a goat shed. So would that go by the chickens? Mm -hmm. They're really loud, right? Are they loud? They can be. Uh, I don't know. Where does the lawn need to be mowed? 
No one. Yeah, where are the blackberry Maybe the bushes? Maybe the golf course. No, we're on the golf course. Pigs on top of the house. And now I'll just put them here. That's where the blackberry bushes are. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you can you can try out an idea and then adjust what it is later. That? A flower the truth garden. is that almost all of these are probably, if not all of them, very close to where they would end up going. And if we can be flexible with each other enough to let things be um, tried out as an experiment, like rather than being like six years of consensus before you finally locate the barbecue, like just try it out, let it move around a little bit, just agree with each other to be flexible and test some ideas. And, and also here, um, I've had, I have been advised by native people that I've asked about how we are organizing our more equitable society and um, Almost, almost no native person that I have had contact with um, feels that, uh, like, basically sees that we're really na we're nascent in this. We're infantile. Mm -hmm. Like, for one thing, we think that we all have to have everyone agree in order to be equal. Um, but mature cultures don't behave that way. They want people to be able to shower each other with gifts, gifts spontaneously. Here's the thing. If each one of us sees that we're part of a greater whole and we act on behalf of that whole, like if we get together and we all know what we're about, the rest of the time when we're not together, we need to be able to act on behalf of that. So when we turn around and we go out, we're representing what we know we share with everyone else. And really mature societies, like, like my friend Elk River said, wherever I go in this world, I am Cheyenne. And everybody is like, you go. You, you know, you be Cheyenne, because they know he's going to act on behalf of their hearts. Um, so that's how, that, I think that's sustainability right there. That's true resilience. Like, you'll do whatever it takes to represent your people. And we're so afraid, I think, generally, of each other having more power than us or whatever, that we won't authorize each other to act on behalf of that shared sense. I don't think we're ever going to be perfect in this. Like, we have to make a lot of mistakes first, and that, I think that has to be okay. But what we've tried out here today, like, this all needs to exist. And it exists everywhere else but where we live. But if this does exist here, I mean, I can't imagine that it, this... Will come. <laughs> and we will be that. Like, they will come and we will be them. Like, we will be so strong that nobody can mess with our place. You know? Okay, so just a few more things. You saw the shadow, the shadow caster. If we had a shared sensibility about where the sun came from, and we were trying to help each other meet our needs, there would be, like, annual gardens all over this place. They would all be located where we knew, knew that they needed to go. There would be food forests on the north side. If Jan and Steve had an issue, she put a food forest right here. You know, they can work as barriers too. Um, but basically, vertical gardens are such an awesome strategy. Food forests that you'll be learning about need to be everywhere. There's this saying that you'll be learning about. There's this saying that you'll be learning about, which is like the from the recline, the designer to the recliner. Like you put in your perennial food forest, and then you can relax a lot of the time while that while those perennials are sitting there just pumping out food for you. Let's have more of that. All of these houses and garages and stuff are analogous to hills and valleys, and they're all dumping water. If we control that water and put it where we want to. We can have water catchment cisterns so that even when there is no water from anywhere else with very vulnerable centralized systems, we will have water when we need it. So they need to be everywhere. Especially when they have those boil mornings. Yeah. <laughs> so here, we're on topography. Somebody has said there is no watershed anymore, and yet the water used to run wherever it wanted. So from the high point of the block, snaking through the topography, if we were to have a water cat commons, it would give us even more reasons to care about each other and know each other. And this fallacy, like that you're taught over and over again in school that nature is just a commodity to be exploited, like we, children would grow up knowing that was totally different because every one of their houses would be feeding that water commons in the center and they would float their boats all the way through this and along the way it would be punctuated by ponds bodies of water that would be there when we needed it in case of a fire, but there would be frogs and fish all the way along, and of course at the bottom there would be a wonderful place to swim. 
And because we've got all these water systems, we're going to have water overflowing. There's going to be more water than we even need, so we're going to have to have swales. And each one of these is feeding fruit trees and nut trees and uh, like environments for insects and birds and all these other species that we have to cohabitate with. And it goes on. And the last bit, I thought that was the last bit, this is the last bit. The last bit is that a lot of these environments can actually become fields um, for ecology that actually take the light that is hitting the planet and warming up these dark thermal masses that shouldn't even have ever been designed that way and turn them into fields of um, living ecology once again. And if you can't afford to do that, then you paint your house roof. And like we did at City Repair, we painted the roof and the next day we had a 35 degree reduction of, 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 of energy, of heat gain in the building. So create these like surfaces on the south side that reflect light. And if you want to absorb light, put in a greenhouse to actually capture the light. Um, last little bit. Coming up, of course we want to be generating power on these rooftops like this. What you're seeing come together here is the way that we will not just meet the challenge of, of climate, climate change and carbon reduction, but actually become resilient and not just, not just like reduce crime. You know what this, like, there's so many other systems here. The, what this does is it brings us to the point where um, we restore the social cultures that are supposed to exist. Like this thing about not fighting ivy and planting what you want instead. What we used to have is like these intergenerational or bi sometimes bi-generational associations of social culture like the Council of Grandmothers, strongest ones of all. There was the brotherhood of men and it was their responsibility to steward little boys, you know, to become strong, resilient, healthy, men and warriors and farmers in all the other roles to then become elders and, and be part of a larger cycle. What we have now is police. We leave the home zone to go to the work zone and we abandon the places where we live and we even leave our own children. Mm -hmm. And in that void, if a fire breaks out, we're not here. Like if we were here, there wouldn't even be out and we have to have professionals come in to put it out because we're at the office or we're like serving big gulps at 7-Eleven. <laughs> you know, honestly. So, this relocalization of our activity, it connotates the, re the return of the resilient social structures that were wiped out from our memory mm -hmm. um, with the invasion of our, of, our, of our people. So, you know, every, just like this connotates something by its placement, every one of these systems requires us to re-engage in our own, the ground of our own lives, and it affects all these other symptoms. And I guess I'll just by cl close by saying, Personally, I hope that you're also tired of waking up every day with the same damn system, sy systematic mm -hmm. symptoms over and over again. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to go to bed again with the same, like, violence being visited uh, against women and children or the phenomena of homeless pe people, which is completely artificial. It shouldn't even be happening. We have so much to do, and you have all these people who could be helping, but they're out there walking around like ghosts. Mm -hmm. So, um... I guess I'll just step back. If, what do you do? You guys have anything you want to add? Are your neighbors Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's got this nursery in her basement. She's got